We're just using some old cans. I got these at the thrift store. Um, I did use a soup can, but I didn't really care for the, the ridges in them. So I thought I would grab some flat cans and I found these, this cookie one, it was 17 cents and this can was 38 cents. This one's kind of fun because it has a little cover on it. So if you wanted to paint that little cover, you could. It did come with a lid that goes all the way down. That's not gonna work for our project. So that's done and that's done. So this one is also, this one I had in my thrift supply and it was already painted black. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your IOD, air dry clay, and you're going to make a round circle, like when you were a kid and you played with Play-Doh. So, yep, about that size. You want a nice clean surface, so I put just a piece of mylar down here. It's clear. You can use whatever you want. And we're going to make a snake. So I put it down and roll it out, making a skinny little snake. You want it as even as possible. And you don't want it real thick. All right, will this go all the way around? Yep. Might need just a bit more, a little bit more length. Okay, and we have some wood glue. We're gonna take this can Place this little guy's nose right there. Oops, you probably want something to hold on each side of it. If you roll up a cloth, put it underneath it, it helps stable it a little bit. So we're gonna take this nose and it's gonna go about right there. So I'm gonna go over And I'm gonna add more glue. Add the glue on this side. And join those ends together. You can either cut them off if you have way too much or I didn't have very much overlap so I just joined them together. Now you're gonna take a little tool and you're gonna start pushing that clay into the hat area. You want it kind of smooth on that one side. You don't want it to look like it's just a big old snake. So smooth it out. And I'm pushing that clay into the can. He's gonna have a little bit of a ridge here. That's perfectly fine. You can camouflage that somehow. You want to make it look like his hat is just, the brim is just not sitting on his head. It's kind of formed into his head. Here is where we seamed it together. All right, see that? It's all seamlessly into the top of that can. Now you're gonna take this nose, you're gonna add a little bit of glue. And 
put it right in there. Kind of flattening it just a little bit. There we go. Now you gotta let it dry. After your clay is all dried, now you're gonna come in with white beadboard. And you're just gonna make a beard area. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. That paint can be really thick on there too. So just paint that beard area, leaving a lot of texture, All right? Then you're gonna go around this brim. No need to be careful at this point. I'm gonna paint his nose white. It's not gonna stay white in the end, but it's just gonna get a nice coat of paint on it. This can has got a pattern on it, so you're probably gonna to have to come back in and do a second coat on there. But you can see how textured that paint is. That's all you're gonna do for this coat. Then you're gonna let that dry. Let it thoroughly dry or you'll have pink when you go back in with the red. I'm pushing the bristles of my paintbrush right into those that crack in his nose. Get some paint in there. Doesn't matter if it's gobby in there or not. We're gonna add a little texture to the paint, to the white paint. So I got a mylar down here. I'm just gonna go ahead and put some white paint out on the mylar. Then I'm gonna take salt wash. You can use baking soda, baking powder, cornstarch, whatever you have. I'm gonna use a pretty grungy brush to put it on. So I'm just gonna mix that all in. It's gonna be really thick, just keep on a mix in. You can add a little bit of water if you want. You're gonna get a nice textured paint. You're just gonna add a little texture to that brim of his hat, cause that's like the um, fuzzy fur on his hat. You can add as much texture as you want, as little as you want, it's totally up to you. We don't want that big glob on his nose. I have a big old wart up there. I'm also gonna add some of that texture to his beard area here. That will give that just a little bit of depth in his beard. So there's a little bit of texture. We're gonna do that on the other one as well. I'm gonna wipe off his nose. Don't want that texture on his nose. And we're gonna give this one just a little bit of black just to make that beard area a touch gray. Give it some nice shadows in there with the dark gray. Again, keeping that textured paint, you can dot with your brush. 
and it'll actually give more peaks and valleys like his beard would look. Making sure that nose is clean. We're gonna go ahead and add, since we have extra gray, we're gonna add some gray to this little guy's beard and in that shadow area, which will really help when we're painting it later. Let them dry. For painting the nose, we're gonna use a little bit of crinoline, which is kind of a yellowy white, which is good skin color. And then we're also gonna add a little bit of the making powder in this little pink, and just mix a little bit of that pink in there, which gives it a nice gnome flesh color. You're gonna paint that nose. The beard is not quite dry yet, but it's dry enough to, to paint the nose. His nose just a bit. Nice flesh color. You can go in a little bit pinker if you like. Right, like that. You can add a little bit more pink to his nose by just taking your brush and going right into the patchouli making powder. And as long as your paint is wet, it's gonna blend right as a highlight on there. So it got his nose just a tiny bit pinker, like he's cold. We're gonna go in with some cake batter on this little guy. Sometimes people have trouble with their DIY paints molding and smelling, and that's because if you work right out of your jar, you, that might happen. So put the amount of paint that you're gonna use onto a paper plate or a sheet, and then work right off of there versus in the jar. We're gonna go ahead and add this cake batter right to this little gnome. I think I'm gonna add some salt wash to it to thicken it up. Not much, I just wanna thicken that paint up a bit so it covers just a little bit better. I'm gonna go ahead and mix that pink in there with it. It'll be just fine. Now to be a little bit thicker cake batter. It does take a little bit to cover, but your second coat should be just fine. Now what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna stick your brush back in your paint jar. So I stick my spatula back in there. I'm gonna mix a little bit more salt wash with it. Making it just a touch thicker. That way you're not contaminating your paint. Same thing for the other one. He's a Christmas gnome, so he gets a coat of marquee DIY paint. I find that the DIY making powders are excellent for blending and making shadows or highlights, whichever you want. On these little guys, I wanted the area where the hat was all balled up, I wanted that to be a little bit shadowed. So I took the making powder DIY Van Gogh -Go, and I just put it into the crease there. First it was a coat of cake batter and then the making powder was put right by that brim. So it gives it like a shadowed look without much effort.
I did the same thing with the bottom. I took the cake batter and put a layer of that on, getting it all over, because you do want a wet surface working with these making powders. Then I went ahead and put the making powder right on the bottom there to go into the crease to look like a shadowed area. You can keep adding the DIY paint and keep adding the making powder until you like the look. If you thought you could live without these making powders, I'm telling you, they are so fun. This is Marquee, which is a really pretty red, but add that date night making powder to it, and oh, it is gorgeous. It adds that bright shimmer to that Marquee paint. So this one, I'm using it as the opposite. I'm using the Marquee in the crease and then adding the date night on top. If you think you need to add any of these DIY paints, making powders, or IOD clay to your collection, you can visit my website at thepaintedphotographer.com and I'll ship them right to your front door. I must have forgotten to film when I painted over that gray beard with white, but I went over it with white and then I went over and just kind of did a good dry brush with some really bright white just to get some of those shadows in there. Then I took weathered wood and beadboard. I mixed them together. And I'm going to do a plaid pattern on this little fall gnome's head. So I'm adding water as well. It makes the paint flow a little bit easier when you're trying to do more detailed work. So I did take chalk and I chalked on the hat just where I wanted to put the stripes. When you're using chalk, you don't have to be perfect because it'll wipe right off of the paint before you seal it. And so I'm just going around with that mix of weathered wood and beadboard and making some stripes on his hat. I'm adding some more beadboard to the paint mix that I already had, quite a bit more because I want it to be a nice contrast. So I'm adding a lot more beadboard. And then I want to do some stripes that are up and down because we're going to get that plaid look with just a really easy method. This is probably not the best method, but it's a pretty sloppy way of doing it and it just is kind of whimsical which i think these gnomes are pretty whimsical so i just did stripes all the way around his hat Then I took straight up weathered wood and a smaller paintbrush and I dabbed right on the intersections of those stripes. That's where the buffalo plaid look comes from is having those dark areas where those two colors would have intersected. So they would have made a darker shadow, a darker hue. So I added that dark look to all those intersections on that plaid and uh, you'll see what happens next. Now I'm taking a piece of sandpaper. It's a 180 grit sandpaper and I'm sanding over his plaid. This is why it can be just a little bit sloppy because I'm going to distress it. And since I had so many layers on there, you're distressing right through the layers. Same with his beard. It had the dark color and the white color and the highlight color. And now we're just distressing right back down to the gray color that was on him. And I'm taking the sandpaper and just scuffing him up a bit. I like him to be just a little bit more roughed up. Same with Mr. Claus there. I roughed him up as well. Now 
Now it's waxing time. I took the DIY clear wax and went over all the different areas of where I was going to seal him up. That paint is water soluble until you do seal it. So at this point, you are sealing it up. I wanted, again, some more shadows. I wanted that vintage-y kind of look. So my brush, I didn't wash it out. I don't remember what was in it, but it, it was okay. It has a little bit of a dark look to it. I took the dark and decrepit dust and I added that to the crease. If you want to control where your dark wax is going, this is the way to go. You can take this dark and decrepit dust and a small fine paintbrush and just put it where you want to go. And as long as it's on that wax, it's going to just melt right in. I took my brush again. This is probably why it wasn't clean. And I brushed and melted that dark, dark, bleh, dark and decrepit dust into it. Then I can take a piece of paper toweling and wipe over the top of all of it and leaving most of the decrepit dust in those crevices, but removing it from the other areas. I'm going ahead and adding more clear wax and more dust and finishing it out. I still didn't feel like he was done and I added this golden rule wax. It is very, very liquidy and it separates. So you do have to stir it every time you open it. It's kind of oily. So go ahead and give it a good stir with the back of your paintbrush. I can put it on with my finger or you can put it on with a brush, um, however you'd like. So I added it to some of the details of this little gnome and it, because it's fall, it just looked so pretty and it looked gorgeous on that yellow color. I just kept adding some more and I finally got a little carried away and I started adding it with a brush and putting a lot more on. I'm not normally a gold person, but this golden rule wax is the bomb. The red Santa gnome, he got the same treatment. He got the clear wax with a dirty brush and the dark and decrepit dust. And as you can see, I'm starting to pull some of that red paint into the white. And that, that happens when you're using red and white. You'll pull some of that back. But I will teach you just a, in a few minutes on this video how you can take clear wax and remove that redness from your white. So once that red is on there and you start wiping back your wax and your decrepit dust, after you get it all cleaned off and your red has transferred to your white, like right there, you can take a clean cloth, buff it off as much as you can, put your clean cloth in the white wax and it erases that marking. All right, here's the gnome can, the fall one. He's empty, got nothing in him. And we're gonna take a couple different flowers and place inside him. So all they are is just cheapy Walmart flowers and stick that, what do they call that? 
brown-eyed Susan in him, and he turns into total cuteness. Then we're gonna switch it up with some white mums. He kind of muted himself. I do like that though. I like the yellow better. And now one more. Or the red. You tell me in the comments which you like. The white mums, the yellow brown-eyed Susan, or these red sunflowers. Let me know in the Did comments. Did you like this project? Thanks for watching. And if you're new here, please subscribe to my channel. Which one did you like better? The fall one or the Christmas one? I think I like the fall one. He is just super cute. I really like him with those brown-eyed Susans. Thank you for watching. If you would like any of my products, please visit me at thepaintedphotographer.com. And I think I'm gonna put these little guys on my website as well. So if you pop on over there, You'll see them over there as well, and I'll ship these guys right to your front door. Please hit the subscribe button and give me a comment. I love to hear from you. And until next time, happy painting.